Hello guys, in this After Effects tutorials, I want to show you how you can create a professional custom logo animation like this one. So stick around, let's get started. In Adobe After Effects, I already created a new composition and I also have imported the logo and placed it on the timeline. You can see the logo is made up of different parts put into different layers. Actually, to animate a custom logo animation, you need to break it into different parts. To do that, I have already made a video in Adobe Illustrator. You can find the video on the card above. Breaking your logo into parts will also depend on the concept you have. So to follow up with this tutorial, you can find the link in the description to download this logo. So the first thing I'm going to do after you have imported the logo, now I'm going to move the anchor point around to align with the original concept like you see in the intro. So select the dot right here, then hit Y on my keyboard to activate the anchor point tool. I'm going to pull in. So we're going to hide this to know what layer that is. You can see it is the first dot on this first cycle right here. So I'm going to move it to this spot. So I'm also going to move the second dot, which is the second one, selecting the layer and move it into position. So the white cycles, I'm going to select them and identify which one it is and also move the anchor point right there. So I'm going to move all this anchor point around to match what the concept is. Every anchor point has been moved into position depending on how I want to animate it to align with the original concept that I have. The next thing I'm going to do is to create a controller to create a simple control for this face value. So I'm going to right click on my timeline, go to new and add a new null object. So I'm going to double click by holding control key and double click on the anchor point tool right here to move the anchor point to the center. I'm going to move it into place right here between these two dots that looks like an eye. So I'm going to name this to eyeball control. I will need another one. I will control D on my keyboard to duplicate it. So I'm going to rename this to face control. The eyeball control is going to control the two dots right here that will move like an eyeball while this head control will control everything including the mouth like and the eyebrow. So this eyeball control a child of the head control which is the face control. So I'm going to select these two black dots and then make them a child of the eyeball control. So I'm going to select the rest part, this white part and this part to make them the head control that is to make them child of the head control so that way if i move that around every other thing will follow you see it so if i also select the eyeball control and move it around you see that the eyeballs are moving beautiful so we are now ready to start animating so before we start animating i'm going to hide the rest part of the logo which is from the chat i'm going to hide that so now I have chance to animate this. So the next thing I'm going to do is to move my time indicator to anywhere around five seconds. Then I'm going to select the face control right here and create a position keyframe and also position keyframe for the eyeball. This is to enable us to have the default pose of this animation. So I'm going to move some few seconds backward and align this to center which is the face that control everything so i'm going to go to the align tool and align it to center so that way i will always have something to go back to so the next thing i'm also going to do is to go back to the solid layer here hit s on the keyboard to reveal the scale position so i'm going to go to the last keyframe right here then and scale everything till I have it cover the entire composition preview. Then I'll come back to this keyframe then and scale it down to around the face right here. Then I'll go to the eyeball control. So I'm going to move my time indicator back to zero. So I will set and create a keyframe for this. So I'll move some few frames forward in time. I move the position of the eyeball to this point. 
Then I'll move some few frame forward in time. Then I'll also create a new keyframe retaining the other keyframe. You can copy and paste. Then I'll move to about one second and then pull the keyframes to this point like it is looking the order to the right. So I'm going to go into the keyframes right here and keep everything arranged within one second. So I'm also going to select the face right here, create a keyframe for the zero and move to the next keyframe here and move it to the left. Then I will retain the same keyframe here. You can copy and paste also. Keep your eyes on my timeline to see what I'm doing. Then I'll move to this port and also move it to the right. So if you move your time indicator to about two seconds and hit N on your keyboard to set your preview limit, if you preview now, this is what you have. Beautiful. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'll come back here. I'll move to this spot right here. I'll also get, create a keyframe for both. You can copy and paste. Then I'll come right here. Then copy these first keyframes and paste it to that spot where the eyes will come back to default. So, and if you preview now, this will give you this. Beautiful. So let's animate other elements like this one right here and the red right here. So I'm going to move to this spot tip. So I'll start from here. I'll hit R on the keyboard to reveal the rotation. I can only animate the rotation right here to keep everything organic like human face. So I'm going to set a keyframe for the rotation. Then I'll move to the next keyframe right here where the eye is looking this way. Then I will rotate it until I have it until I have it right there. So I'll also move to the next keyframe and create another keyframe there. You can control C and control V. So I'll move to the next keyframe right here and move it to the opposite direction, which is here. Then I'll move forward in time Copy the same keyframe, Ctrl C, Ctrl V to paste it right here. Then I'll move to this spot. Then copy the first keyframe that I have here. Oh, and then paste it right there. So I'll also do the same thing with the mouth right here. So I'll rotate this. You see it? So I'll Ctrl D. Ctrl Z, I'll Ctrl Z. I'll undo that. Then I'll come back here. I'll set a keyframe for the rotation. Then when I move to this first keyframe, I'm going to rotate it to look like it is looking, the mouth is moving to this spot. Then I'll move to the next keyframe. I'll control C and control V to paste this keyframe. So I'll move to the next keyframe and then rotate it to the other direction. I'll set a keyframe right here. Then I'll go to this spot and set a keyframe to the rotation so that it will go back to default. So but in between this keyframe now, I'm going to create some secondary movement like here. At this spot, it should rotate to the other side. While at this spot, in between the keyframes, it should also go back to the other side a bit. So if you preview now, that is going to create a shake. You see that? So now this is where we show the rest part of the logo. If you remember, we created some keyframe here that we can always go back to. So I'm going to move this back right here so that it will come to this spot. So of course I will delete this keyframe because it's the same thing with the other one. So I will come here. So basically I'm moving this keyframe so that it will go back to default at this point. So if you preview now, this is what you're going to have. You see it is going back to default. So I'm also going to move the other keyframe so that it will align with this. That way I have everything revealing like these two keyframes right here. So I'm going to move it to this point. 
I want to make sure everything aligns. We're going to highlight all the keyframes that we have here. If you like, you can leave it at linear. It still works, but I want it to be more smooth and organic. So I'm going to right click, go to keyframe assistance, then easy ease. You can also hit F9 to activate this feature. So I'm going to go into the graph editor and you can edit your own too like this. So the next step now, let's animate the rest part of the logo. So we're going to select all those parts that we have hidden before. Then hit the icon, eye icon here to reveal all of them. So I'm going to come to this point where the logo start moving to the left. So with my logo still selected, I will hit Alt and then trim it to this spot so that everything begins from that spot. Okay. So I'm still going to hit the A, which is the chart icon right here and hide it. So I want to start revealing from the T. So I will select the T and make sure it is there. Then I'll select C and H to animate them. So I'm going to select C and H to animate those. So I'm going to go forward in time to this spot. Hit P on the keyboard to create a keyframe for position. Then I'll shift T to reveal the opacity value. I also create a keyframe. So I'll come back to this spot right here. Then I'll move the C to the left, to the right, I mean, so that it can be just exactly the spot where the H is. So for the T, I'm going to move it to the right. I'm going to move the position to the right so until it is also under the H. Then I will drop the opacity for both to zero. Then this is starting with H. I'll select all of this keyframe to easy ease. So if you preview now, this is what you're going to have. So we still need to work on the T. So I'll go to the T right here. I'll move the position keyframe backward. I want it to show a little bit late. So I'm going to move to this spot where the entire thing shows the remaining of the text. So I'm going to move the T very close to the C. So at that spot, I don't want it to open up. So I'm going to move it back a bit like this. So I'll also copy the keyframe for the position, Ctrl C, Ctrl V, so that it will take a little bit of time before it starts opening up. So this is where we unhide the chart icon right here. So I'm going to hide it. So I will hit S on my keyboard to reveal the scale property. So in between where the T stops and expands again, right between here and here. So I'm going to set a scale keyframe for that. So I'll set a scale keyframe. Then I'll come back right here when the T is still closed. Then I'll set the keyframe value to zero for the scale. So in between right here, I'm going to create a bulging keyframe. So let's move this back a bit. So I'm going to bulge this up quite a bit. So I have to also easy ease the keyframes. So if you preview now, the entire logo is revealed using this first eye looking and then the rest of the text appearing. So I'm going to select one of these, Control A on your keyboard to highlight everything. Of course, I'm going to deselect these two bottom layers. I mean this BG layer. So I'm going to Control Shift C on the keyboard to pre-compose it. So I'm going to name this all elements. Move all attributes to the new composition and then hit OK. So what I'm going to do here now is to create it and make sure it is looping in case if I want to use it as GIF. So of course, I will Ctrl D on the keyboard to duplicate this same layer. So I'm going to find four seconds forward in time right here. Then I'll select both layer and Ctrl Shift D to break that part apart. Then I'll backspace to delete the excess. So I'll select the button, uh, I'll select one of the layer right here, right click, go to time. 
and select type reverse layer that is going to reverse this so i'm going to move this to the tip right here so that it will start exactly where everything is ended so this is the final result you can see it if you arrange it this way and reverse the time it is going to continue to loop in case if you're using it as a gif so this is how it is going to continue to loop and this is how you can create a professional looking custom logo animation right inside adobe after effect if you learn something new on this video please hit the like button that will enable the algorithm to suggest this to more people if you have any question please feel free to ask me in the comment section and i'll reply to all questions as quick as i can if you like the video leaving a comment is all a support so with whatever way you're able to support me i highly appreciate you so until i see you again on the next one my name is ssb otaru from motion digit studios